and uh, welcome to Comics News Today. This is Chester C. Busby III, of course, coming at you, uh, doing our daily show here at 8 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we do have some interesting stories to you uh, to talk to you about today. And, of course, we've got a great panel sitting up here, and we're happy to be with you. We see Joshua Hughes is in there hailing Raven first in the chat. Hey, good for you, dude. Uh, and uh, we're we're happy to have everybody else in here uh, that is uh, coming in. Uh, keep in mind, look at all our links down below, particularly the Fanspeak one on Facebook. Uh, we're very happy to have you all over there and being part of what we're doing. But today we are going to get into the news. Uh, but of course, before I do that, I always want to come over and say hello to my panel. Now, of course, we are joined by the chairman today. I'm very happy to see you here, dude. How are you doing? Well, he's he's uh, said he would be back in a moment. I, I thought I saw it blink on, so I guess he's not back yet. Uh, but all right, let me go. I'm doing here. great. How are you? Well, coming to you then, Todd. You're uh, 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 sitting here and you're showing us a piece of, uh, piece of art, man. Uh, what is this? Oh, uh, this is my first take um, on the graveyard shift character. That is a Michael Myers take. I see. Are you allowed uh, to be showing this and talking for... about this? Is this uh, is this not spoilers? Well, it's no. This isn't spoiling because it's not going to be used. <laughs> I see. Because okay. this is sort of a <laughs> yeah, sort of a miss. I, I I made a little bit of a miss, but um. I like it though. It looks really good, dude. Yeah, yeah. I I could see him sort of with instead of the mask, like he has a mask, but like his skin sort of being alabaster. Yeah. You know, I. I like I, I can see that. I don't know what the what their take is, but you know, I do have the script. I'm ready to go. So well, I'm, I'm juggling, I'm juggling all kinds of things every day. No, you are busy, dude. You have a lot of things going on. I'm really happy for you though that you got that opportunity to work on this uh, uh, graveyard shift two. I guess it's being called, or does it have another? Well, you don't don't give us any spoilers. Uh, but it's really cool. You got to uh, you got chosen to do that. Uh, over here in the chat, I see trusty sidekick has dropped in. He says hello, hello. Well, hello to you. We got John Dillard gaming the system. Hi there. Good morning. Well. Good morning to you, too, although I do think it's your evening. Uh, Nick W. is here, and he says, skipped out on Clownfish. What do you got for me? Uh, we got some news things to talk about. That's what we got. <clears throat> and, of course, we are also joined by the Donnelly Lama. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Hey, folk. Aloha. Thank you for joining us. Nick, really? You skipped Clownfish for us? Thanks, I feel man. so. Clownfish is pretty yeah. good. I like those guys. Yeah. Um, but... Um, yeah, no, we're going to do our best to entertain you guys and give you some information. Of course, we always want that feedback, so feel free to ask us questions or just, you know, insult us in general. Uh, Pixel Trader is in here. He says, yo, well, yo to you, sir. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, we will well, not be joined by Booster today because why, Denali? Why is Booster not going to be here, King, like, forever? Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom oh, Hearts. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, isn't, I, that I thought Mickey... isn't that a Mickey Mouse game? It is a Mickey Mouse it... game, and it has him by the yep. balls, dude. I mean... Yeah. Both, both, oh. both hands full up, dude. Absolutely. We kicked Booster. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but we did bring you some concept art for Graveyard Ship too. So there you go, exclusive there cut, go. exclusive contact. Yeah. Now we know there's a serial killer type character like Michael Mars in Graveyard Ship, which we didn't know before. Tell everybody. Um, You're in such trouble. Okay. <laughs> I know he is. Yeah, dude. <laughs> So in trouble. So in trouble. Yeah. So All right. But uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, question, exclamation, question mark from Nick W. Yeah, no, <clears throat> this uh, it's a certain generation, I think, that that's a very, very uh, beloved uh, series. I know my kids played it, particularly my daughter. She loved that game. Uh, and I imagine she's probably going to be playing it again. And uh, But uh, they've been waiting, oh, I don't know, a decade or more. Or 14 years. 14 years for that game to come out. And actually, Denali falls right in that generation, uh, maybe on the, the yep. back end of it. Uh, did you play the first one or the second one? I played the first one from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. My daughter was uh, picked up on the second. Uh, a little bit younger mm -hmm. than you. I'd say about a decade younger than you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's very popular, very uh, loved by that generation. And, and it's kind of cool. Now, especially uh, one of the benefits for that game, I would say, is because uh, now that Disney has picked up all these extra prop, uh, properties since, like uh, Marvel and Pixar and uh, and the Fox stuff as well. Um, they can uh, they can you can see all those different characters. You'll see uh, Marvel characters, you'll see Pixar characters, the Toy Story characters, etc. Uh, so uh, I I get why they're into it. It's um, uh, I, they're going to have fun and they should enjoy. Yeah. It. Theme park going to a theme park for sixty bucks compared to 
$109. True. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I never played that game, so I don't know much about it. Joshua Hughes says, Booster is busy preparing for his epic first appearance on Drone Accorded Pro Edition. <laughs> Oh my! That should be interesting. Yeah. Check that out. What happens to uh, you know? I'm uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I'll, of course, I'll be there in the moderating as I usually do. So I will. Uh, I will see how that debacle goes. I will. Uh, I kind of. What do you guys want to guess? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, you're going to put your bets here. Booster's going to kill it. He's going to kill them. Throw all the shades there. They're going to. They're. They're going to lose because he, they can't stop laughing. Maybe. No, no. See, Booster's is sort of a, f a crowd favorite or a fan favorite. He is, yeah. So this this is what you know. It irritates. It honestly irritates me a little bit because I, I'm going to spend two hours drawing while Booster wins by, um, you know, doing what he does. <laughs> but in in this sense, I'll get a laugh at it. You know what I mean? Because he's probably going to win if they put him on that poll. He might well. I'll go vote for him just. Yeah, I mean, we should all vote for him, really. Oh, we will. It's automatic. He gets I mean, the vote no matter what this time, just because. Yeah. I'm just wondering what how the. Doesn't matter what he draws. No, uh, the, no, I don't know what they're going to draw. It doesn't matter uh, because uh, uh, it's just the the point of it and the funniness of it. And I have a feeling I'm I'm not sure how Mike will react. He'll either be slightly fuming under the surface, or he'll just get a big kick out of it. Uh, but I think the rest of the artists will get a kick out of it. I think the, it'll it'll be a pretty funny show actually which is good for them and their and their ratings if if we want to take it down to that level um i see yeah Paul. yeah yeah go ahead and that's and then that's really the big thing right is yeah. to have actual entertainment value yeah. these live streams aren't aren't necessarily to to show you know great artwork well okay hold on all the other <laughs> live streams are, are for great artwork. When you're when you're watching Gary or John or, yeah. or Mike and they're and they're penciling their comic book cages, you, you want to see that great artwork. These drawn and quartered ones, they're to see great artwork and also to have fun and it, it be it being entertaining, which is why there's so much smack talk and in, in interaction between all the artists. And in this particular instance, you're going to have a lot of interaction with someone who's not necessarily an artist, but it's once again it's that entertainment value. And I, I think that's the important part. No, no, I agree. And I'm going to go over and give him a, a peps, uh, pep talk. I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder. I'm going to say, wee booster, you got to go in there with confidence and be ready. I don't want you to be nervous. I want you to go in there and bring your best show you've ever done. And uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun just to check it out. Uh, we do have Lorenzo Sleeslack in here. Hello. He's saying hail to everybody who needs hailing. Uh, Paul Hassett is in here. He says, greetings. Well, greetings to you, sir. Of course, Pixel has jumped up uh, us up here with us. Uh, how are you doing today, yeah. Pixel? Doing good, man. I tried to connect on my other account for a second there, and I had to had to fix that. I was just going to come in and comment on it too. I I think that he's got a chance to win just purely from the uh, the fan vote. Oh no, I agree, dude. I mean, and and it really depends if if he comes in nervous and you know he's not talking a lot and stuff like that, it won't go that way. Uh, but I really hope that he you know he comes in with confidence because I, I mean he's got to be nervous. I'm sure, right? I mean we joke yeah. around and he plays the. Uh, he plays the self-deprecating fool really well, right? I mean, that's he does that character so well. Uh, but yeah. we all know that's not what he is, right? <laughs> he's a he's a really smart, good guy, actually. Um, so he's going to he's certainly going to be nervous, I'm sure. Uh, so we got to give him all our support, and because we want him to have a lot of fun. Oh um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, finally, the pro edition will be entertaining, says John Dillard. Uh, we'll be having more hails and oh, Pixel Trader is here! Yay, kick Pixel Trader! Okay, uh, Vail is here, and uh, the Wolfman is talking to everybody. Joshua Hughes says Booster wants you to tell him that he's like a son to you and that you're proud of him. Well, I will do. And uh, we have Dave in here. He says Booster. One due to Russian interference. <laughs> Maybe he did, dude. Maybe he did. Uh, John Dillard says that Kingdom Hearts is a fantastic story about a boy named Sora. Uh, which, uh, by the way, Sora means sky in uh, Japanese, and his quest to rid the universe of evil taking place across the Disney and Final Fantasy universes. Cool. There you go. All right. Well, uh, we are uh, going ahead and we're going to go ahead and start up uh, talking about our news articles today, which we have a few interesting ones. Uh, we even have a trailer today. Mm, too bad Booster missed that. Teaser. Yeah, teaser. Well, teaser. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, let me come over here and yeah. share this with our panel so they can see and... Uh, uh, now, this is uh, pretty interesting to me, just to start right off, Den uh, Denali. Go ahead, man. Kelsey Shannon's uh, Barack Panther <laughs> in, 
And of course, what the hell? <laughs> what is that? What the fuck is that? Hey, Are you kidding me? Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh my goodness. What is, why would you do this? This is so ridiculous. Ding, ding. Continue, oh Tanelli. Continue. Chuck Dixon, Trump Space Force in Antarctic Press for April 2019. So for those who missed out on the Indiegogo for Trump Space Force and kind of are interested, you can actually pick it up on in April at your local comic book stores because it'll be back there. Um, yeah, so they're playing... Um, <laughs> just God, you just threw my no, threw me no, out of your reaction, fun, dude. I mean, uh, let's just read this little piece right here. Antarctic Press are launching All comics right. from both sides of the political spectrum in April. Kelsey Shannon's Barack Panther, back in black, number one, <laughs> in which Barack Obama <laughs> and Joe Biden are dealing with alien immigration, men and black agents trying to stop ET being captured by ICE. That should be hilarious. Uh, and Chuck Dixon and Timothy Lim's Trump Space Force number one, fighting against CNN. Sorry. CNN <laughs> from the far left wing of the galaxy. Good grief. Uh, yeah, dude, that sounds hilarious because we know Kelsey Shannon, that man is is dark and twisted beyond his absolutely stunning skills. So this should that should be a funny book, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, Rich must have been uh, coughing up blood writing this article. <laughs> Maybe. And, and you notice he spelled Dixon's name wrong. He called him Dixon. Right. Once again, you know, <laughs> editors, just hire one. Just one. Just a person who could there, do the simple there, job. There right? is. There is. But it only matters if you're not agreeing. He, <laughs> the he spelled are... Timothy's name wrong, too. He spelled it Tim <laughs> I know. I wonder if he did this intentionally to be be rude and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, but uh, we see typos in these places all the time. It just, I mean, I'm not going to get into it, mm. but it's just ticks me off. Yeah. I mean, you go to New York, uh, the, uh, the New York Times, right, or the Washington Post, which are supposed to be these flagship, you know, newspaper, you know, news uh, uh, agencies worldwide, and there's just spelling mistakes and, and gram grammatic mistakes all across them every day. And it's like, I mean, come on, where's your honor? Where's the respect for the job? I mean, hire someone that, that can do the job. What, what are you doing? Um, anyway, that's a aside. Uh, this is coming from Antarctic Course, Brock Panther, back in black. I love that. It is so funny, dude. And they got, he, he's, uh, Biden is a little Can alien. You see the and, picture? Uh, huh? I'm showing a picture, yeah. Oh yeah. God, this, this is by uh, Kelsey Shannon. Yeah. Did you, any of you guys back Trump like Space Kelsey. Force? He's... Well, back it. I got it. It's Sweet. wonderful. Yeah. I laughed so much. I'm glad. It's 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 so ridiculous. It's good. It's that over the top ridiculousness, isn't it? <laughs> it, yo. Know, but you know what though? Here's the thing. I gotta give them. I gotta give the writing a lot of good credit because you get. Well, we got Gina Diggers. What's going on? I'm just. I'm sorry. You down the page. Go ahead. <laughs> just talk. Um. <laughs> so, so the uh, the writing though, because he captures the speech pattern of Trump. You know, I'm one where when I read something, if I have a reference, I will because because I kind of mimic voices a little bit myself. I'm able to hear that voice in my head with that speech pattern and the the things you know you know how Trump is. Come on, hmm. they capture his speech pattern in in that, and it adds so much for it. And then of course there's Cecil floating around at one point uh, in in the spaceship, but I won't go there. Um, so it's just. It's just, it's just so fun. It's just, it's fun. It really is fun. What, what they do with it, and they touch on some of the other uh, sci-fi things that are out there. You know, uh, like Macross. You know, a, a giant spaceship, and then it transforms. I'm not, not going to go into that in, in any more detail. If you haven't, you know, gotten it yet, I do your best to get 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 a hold of a copy and uh, and and see what it transforms into. Wow. Look at this little thing here in the about down here about Rich Johnson, chief writer and founder of Bleeding Cool. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. Comic book clairvoyant. What is I, huh? Political cartoonist. All right. Okay, Rich. Mm. He can see comics that are other places? Yeah, I, 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 he can see them. <laughs> but, it, but the thing is, he cannot hear because he does not listen. He's yes, he's not he's not clear 
um, auditory. No, that was deep, though. That yeah. was pretty deep. You guys should take that wisdom I just gave you. It was deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, great. Oh, I Josh Crow Huge a... says, yeah, Josh Crow Huge says, Orange Man Bad. Dave says, I got my Trump Space Force. Jess got my patch, too. Mm-hmm. John Diller says, well, Rich wrote his own name right, so there's that. Uh, Pope Fire says Pope could write better articles as saying something because I'm terrible. Lorenzo says hail, which we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, J Pod says this article is hard to swallow. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm going to say that the the idea, this idea, I I, I got to agree with with Todd in that it really for me it just it turns my stomach th- this concept. But looking at Joe Biden's grin. And the, the goofy look that, that is going on here. Um, yeah, I got to give him credit because for Antarctic Press to do this, to, to them to have Trump Space Force out and also uh, Barack in black, uh, it, it does show that they're willing to go both, both ways and, mm-hmm. and show different stories from different, different sides of uh, the spectrum. Well, and go for that cringy, go for that cringy immigration thing. You know, Trump, Trump did the cringy CNN thing, where that the CNN are the bad aliens, and and the deep state is is embedded in there. Here we're going the immigration route, and we're we're stopping big bad ice from from collecting you know aliens. Okay, that's all right. It's cringy. Uh, it's fun. Well, I hope it's a giant ice monster. Well, I think it's going to be a parody. It, it's a parody, just like oh, the Trump Force thing. I think it'll be funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I mean, would be you know, good. Um, I do think it's funny that uh, all of a sudden, because the, because the Democrats are constantly trying to find a new path to walk upon, right? Well, let, let me say the mm-hmm. progressives, not the not the Democrats. And of course, one of the ones is saying, you know, we have to destroy ICE. We have to get rid of ICE. Why? ICE is one of the one of the few success, somewhat successful uh, agencies in the government. I mean, so many of them. That's fail. what. That's why you got That's why they got to get rid of it because it's successful. Look at everybody else back. They don't. They, there's so many bounds that they could overstep, but, but they don't. You know. They don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're actually fairly yeah. successful. I mean, look at the FBI yeah. and the debacle it's turned into. But I don't. We don't want to get into politics. But uh, right. But I think. I think it'll be funny, dude. I'll get a kick out of it. Yeah. Valnet says, "I favorite? look. I like the look of the image coming soon comic. I hope that isn't a variant cover. I'm yeah, sorry, Valnet." You do it see is. that he, Joe Biden has like like kazoo type antenna. Yeah, no, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, what <laughs> I hope they, uh, what I hope they do with the Barack's dialogue here is he's normally incredibly boring and long winded, and it just is killing you. And then all of a sudden, you see him holding and reading something, and and it's brilliant. I hope I hope uh, they pull off oh, that, uh, yeah. that uh, thing because that's a, that's the weird dichotomy with uh, uh, with Barack Obama, right? If that dude is reading a prepared speech, boy, he's like on fire, man! What a wonderful speaker! But then if he's just on his own, man, back up. Uh, mean, Joe, <laughs> Joe, we gotta get us um, some um, big uh, uh, fire power, uh, uh, bigger um, um, uh, guns and and glasses. Uh, you, you got um, some. You don't. Gun. Don't get laughing. me don't get me wrong here. <laughs> get back I mean, up but, a little but, bit. Dude, talk about night and day. It's really surprising because <laughs> you take someone like Bill Clinton. That dude never had as good a speech as a couple of his yes we can speeches that were the written ones. Never. But yet Bill Clinton can sit up anywhere, anytime and sit and, and drop down and talk with you about anything. Smart guy, very capable speaker, right? It's, it's just, right. wow, I was really shocked by Barack Obama. I guess he's just really good actor. He's just not a very good statesman. Oh, well. Do me one favor. Do me one favor and scroll down again. Sure. I know this is this is not necessarily the article we were looking at. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold digger. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's the one. Yeah, nobody's right. talking about how books, how much of books are coming out. Some of them look really. I don't cool. care about the rest of them. That guy actually does look cool. The Crimson Scorpion. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, why isn't he in Comics Gate? What is the deal here? Well, I don't know. Everybody doesn't have to. Be Exciting over comics. Yeah. Exciting so, comics. The Crimson Scorpion to f- battle the Blue Beetle. <laughs> I'm an old Gold Digger fan. Way back when, uh, okay. the creator yeah. was out of San Antonio, Texas, and of course, mm-hmm. I was uh, mm-hmm. stationed there. My first, uh, my first uh, base to be to be at. So it was. Uh, I got got into that because it was a local creator guy. So it was awesome. Cool. Anyway. 
Well, no, we got, yeah, he's the, still going. We got the he, mighty Willie Mammoth in here, man. Go ahead, Pixel. I was just say he's still going too. He's never taken a break, as far as I know. He's kept that series going. It's on like issue what, like three hundred something, something oh, crazy. Yeah, two hundred sixty-five. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone some weird routes, and you know I'm not necessarily into all the weird places that he's taken the the sorceress type, you know, what, what portals, cybernetic psychopath. What is this going on, science ninjas? Um, but I, I, but to have that level of creativity to keep pushing it, yeah, and keep putting out the comic, uh, yeah, I got to give him credit for that. Hmm. <laughs> it looks funny. I've never read or even heard of this comic book, but uh, boy, it's been around for a long time. It's uh, yeah, and furries, furries. There's got some furries in there and some cuties. Yeah, there's yeah. there, some Is cuties. Is she a furry? She's not, but her half adopted sister Cheetah, where Cheetah sister is. <laughs> okay. Let's let's not overthink it. <laughs> moving extremely, on. Moving extremely on. buxom. Yeah. Extremely uh, buxom we... cheetah sister. Yes. Ooh, buxom. buxom. I haven't heard that yes. word in a long time. Buxom. All right. Yeah, throw that in there. Yeah. Now, this is uh, less fun of our article, uh, but uh, interesting nevertheless. Go ahead, Danelle. Yeah, but uh, BuzzFeed first rounds of layoff puts an end to his national news desk, um, which is kind of funny because the national news desk is a lot of left leaning politics. So a lot of those same writers that we talk about and deal about with a lot of these articles are actually being laid off. Um, and, you know, they are included with this because this is owned by, I think, uh, Verizon. Uh, networks mm -hmm. that owns a couple other uh, new sites as well. Um, so it looks like, you know, because of their uh, that whole mantra we keep saying that we've said a lot of times and everybody on our team, <laughs> we say, you go uh, get woke, go broke. Well, that's really happening because in two, oh, yeah. uh, 2018, Vox uh vanity fairs vice gq vogue teen vogue the new uh york daily news good media group glamour the outline refinery 29 cnn all has experienced layoffs learn to code absolutely yeah yeah you know the funny um, thing uh from your statement you just said i'm uh, this is kind of a slightly off topic but uh, i'm kind of mm -hmm. curious do you think we're seeing a breakdown of the two-party system I mean, because we have the the that alt right movement. It is real now. It started as a nonsense, but it has become a thing. We have the standard conservatives. We have libertarians. Uh, we have liberals, and we have these psycho progressives, regressives. Uh, do you you think we're going to see the breakdown of the two party system, or are we going to just see kind of the everything flow to one side or the other, like Trump? I mean, he's a Democrat. I mean, ultimately, he's a classic liberal, right? But he went Democrat. I mean, he went Republican because the Democrats have lost their damn mind. Um, so, do you think we're going to see the two party system break down, or is it just going to kind of continue it as it has been? I think it's going to be a reset because it always happened. If you look in history, it's always been a two party system. But one party always falls down, and a new party takes its place. Yeah. What that you, whether it's the Democrats or the Republican, is we're not sure which party will ultimately break down and mm -hmm. kind of renew itself. Because before it was the Whigs, and then you know the Quakers and the Federalists, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. True, true. true. I think that yeah. could be. I think I think the Republicans stand a better chance because just you're because you're seeing them now as they are balancing themselves back with Trump, uh, th that's actually the party Trump actually is representing with the more of the people concept because the people went against big government, yeah. right? They wanted somebody that wasn't in the government. I think the Republicans are starting to see that, uh, that, that light a little bit better and they're going to be more people-ish. And if you're people-ish, you're more moderate, uh, moderate to the right. Right. And where Democrats were for, for a long time, were moderate to the left. Well, they're now further to the left. So I think those that I, the Democrats have the propensity to become more and more ingrained with this leftist yelling concept that we constantly see. And, and I, I think that they're going to go to the wayside sooner than the Republicans are. Well, I think right. so, too. I think the Democrats are <clears> there. They have a real problem. You have a communist straight up communist movement uh, going on within the Democratic Party. 
uh, or they might call themselves democratic socialists, but we know it's all Marxism. Um, and uh, right, yeah. the classical liberals who, you know, I don't agree with a lot of stuff they say, but they're, they, at least they're sensical. Um, I think those two cannot exist together, whereas the more extreme alt-right and the standard conservative and even libertarians can find some common ground uh, easier. Um, but right, uh, yeah. it is interesting because it relates to it, right? I mean, we're in a political, the- cultural war, war right now, right? Right. right. And, and the Democrats are losing the yellow dogs that they've hailed on for, for so long. The yellow dog Democrats are, are finally swapping over to the Repu- side of the Republicans. They are. Trump is a perfect example. Right. Yeah. But, you know, right. on this topic in particular, I thought it was interesting. Cause you, you see the, uh, you know, uh, learn to code uh, meme that's been going on, the NPC meme. Uh, as one thing that's for sure, the, the, the right memes a lot, uh, or at least the center memes a lot better than the uh, extreme uh, left. Um, but um, now we know this. Because you have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> well, it's true. You do. But yeah. yeah but... Um, and the reason why I got this is because it, we're dealing with a lot of um, articles in the media that deals with culturals, and a lot of the cultural uh, website are very left-leaning uh, website with biases like the Mary Sue, Bleeding Cool, mm-hmm. um, CBR, BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed as Kodan, well. Kotaku. All, well, and then this article is basically kind of pointing out that because of all that heavy-handedness of their extreme leftists, they're actually losing money that is causing them to lay off a lot of staff members. So we might be seeing a change in this upcoming year that, you know, it doesn't seem like we're doing anything except just voicing our concerns and complaints and, you know, our criticism and calling them out when, it, you know, they need to be. Because, well, one of this is could be because of individuals like ourselves on YouTube, which is kind of speaking out and saying, hey, you know, don't give us your opinion about the stuff. Just tell us the news, just the facts. Let us inform our own opinions. Yeah, no. And, and, and this article doesn't have to do with the point I'm about to make, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the uh, uh, learn to code uh, meme that's going along. Um, it's coming, you know, and one of the things that broke the back recently was, if you guys remember those Catholic, I think, high school kids uh, uh, that were out there at a uh, pro life uh you know rally i guess it was i don't think it was a march um and uh, of course they they were came out in the news but all the news sites nbc everybody uh they were bullying these poor indians and they were and and they the blacks they had with them were bad blacks um and um you know the, this poor veteran holder of the peace pipe native american vietnam war veteran etc cetera, etc cetera. and they the death threats and just constant typical nonsense going against these kids high school kids and then of course we right. saw the videos which showed us that no the kids didn't do anything these uh, these uh, Native American activists came up to them and got in their face the kids actually kind of just played along and just started dancing with them they weren't rude at all right and we also found that this uh, amazing holder of the peace pipe this this Native American veteran uh, is not anything what he said he was he's just a liar Right. Yeah. And, and this, and this terrible smirk smile on this kid's face was actually a nervous response because he didn't know how to yep. basically react with adults doing this type of uh, you yep. know, actions. Yeah. Extreme fake news. And those kids had death threats. The school had death threats. And a lot of these news uh, uh, sources like Mary Sue, like BuzzFeed, like other ones, were supporting the idea of, of death to children and ruining of their life for what? Right. Um, and and this is the nonsense that continues and continues. Uh, of course, we just had that that uh, wonderful Gillette commercial, and uh, they continued on and on of this uh, absolutely insane media, which gets woke and goes broke. So I hope you guys fall and burn in the most beautiful trash fire ever. That's what I hope. <laughs> but anyway, we got to move on. I mean, we we don't talk politics so heavily, but. Uh, it yeah. is what it is, man. Now this, we're going to enjoy or, or not enjoy. Uh, unfortunately, Booster's not here. He usually likes these kind of things. But uh, here you go, guys. We're going to see a teaser for Birds of Prey 2020. See I hope soon. it's as good as as Captain Marvel looks. Yeah, no, I hope so do I. <laughs> Of 
right, but all we really get this. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> oh, it's like it. Okay, okay, okay. Boom. That's all we get to see the other people potentially. Yep. Let's watch it again. They got a couple seconds. Let's give them a couple seconds again. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Okay, that was like four seconds. All right, cool. Um... <laughs> well, it's not really. That's really even a teaser. <laughs> yeah. It's it's Harley Quinn and the Pussy uh, Cats. That's long the <laughs> it's basically soft soft core TNA with uh, Harley Quinn is what it is. But it doesn't even look yeah. like Harley Quinn. He's know. wearing garbage. What is this? <laughs> Todd, give us your insight. How was that amazing uh, twenty nine seconds? What do you think? Um, why does she look so weird? She, I've never seen her in this kind of getup. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. There's nothing. Did you see anything DC there? No. Did this look like some DC? Well, let's watch it again. Now this looks like. <laughs> let, oh, the mallet. We got the mallet. I see so, the okay. There's a mallet. Okay. A huntress. All right. Alcohol. Okay. Cast. Bad. There's another girl here. Oh. Right there. Who is that? <laughs> Oh, look, I'm so funny. I'm angsty. I'm weird. Aren't I sexy? I'm. Don't you want me? Don't you want I'm, me? Geesh. I just want to watch you get bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys. You could do better than this. We we, we saw actually Squ 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 Suicide Squad was not a good movie, but the trailer was the second one was killer, right? Uh... <laughs> There's well, nothing to work with there. Really. Next. I, I thought that was a preview for Zoolander, but uh, I Maybe. guess not. That's what it kind of felt like, <laughs> wasn't it? All right, dude. Have at it. Oh, good. Bendis teases Leviathan, DC's <laughs> next monumental event. Ooh, monumental. Mm, we got Superman's <laughs> symbol, and we have a weird uh, runic sword. Sword. Yeah. Kind of yep. just like shapey lines. All right, let's come down here and uh, well, tell us what's going on, Danelli. There's something epic happening. We need to know epicness is happening. Yeah. So Bendis is not content to just mess up Superman, but he's going to go after Young Justice and the other DC titles in an upcoming event that's a massive crossover. So expect Bendis to be touching all of your favorite titles. He will. And of course, he gave us that Naomi. Do you guys read that Naomi yet? No. Wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Bendis is Bendis. He's been brought in as uh, you know Dan Didio's thug, and he's doing his job. He is doing his job. And uh, I'm sure this will be wonderful. And uh, I'd say the worst, uh, tre the, the most damage he's actually done is uh, is tearing up uh, the Super Sons and uh, absolutely destroying a, a quite loved little. Uh, project that, that people were really enjoying, and yeah, they probably should have continued that into the future, right? But no, we can't, right. can't have that. You never know. It, it could be awesome, could huh, DeWolf? You want to defend this one? You want to defend it? I know you like defending things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, DeWolf, defend it. Come on. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? I, I know I'm going to pick my battles. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> March hair has a very good comment. Okay, okay, said. hold on. No, no, hold on. Hold okay. on. I, you know, so Superman has been around for a while and been through various incarnations and, and trials and tribulations. So, what this is with this storyline, though, we're not having to worry about Lois Lane mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Superman having any sort of relationship no, problems or issues. No worries. Here is an actual separated. Yeah. Right? So, here's an antagonist. That's actually going back to it's just it's a superhero story and antagonist story villain, and and they're and they're having that um, standard regular old you know issue without having to br bring up relationships and problems and stuff things like that that we we don't like. So there you go. Okay. Well, good. remember. Good job. And remember, you have you have teenage Jonathan Kent, um, seventeen year old. So he'll be in that mix oh. as well. Yeah, I can't. I, uh, that's all I got. I got. I, I, I and, and, line, you know. That was a good job, man. Yeah. You play devil's advocate very well. That's your job. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't have much faith for this at all. But uh, another big event. Yay! Yay! <laughs> a blind pig finds an acorn every once in a while. This is yeah. true, man. But now moving on to maybe a happier news, or maybe one of the worst debacles we've seen in modern remake history. 
Bill and Ted 3 could be a Christmas release. <laughs> no <laughs> way! Hey! Dude. Oh, no. Dude. <laughs> oh, Denali, please just tell him what this nonsense is about, man. So, basically, um, they're following up with the uh, producer-writer of Bill and Ted, um, which is a uh, uh, Skoder birth. Um, and they said basically they started um, kind of <laughs> producing earlier this month and looking how it goes. Um, they might be done for Christmas 2019. Mm -hmm. And this was done through the CN, uh, CNET uh, interview. And who's directing it is actually the director of Guardians. Uh, Galaxy, Quest. Oh, Galaxy, so Quest, yeah, Galaxy Quest. So I kind of enjoy Galaxy Quest. Yeah. So I did enjoy that movie. So yes, hopefully too. it'll hopefully it'll come out. I mean, this is Keanu Reeves at his best. Say, whoa, dude! Well, aliens rule. Yeah. He's so great. And they he's like they won't be recasting Rufus, by the way, uh, which is a good thing because that would probably make right. people angry. But so they're just leaving it off, which makes sense. I mean, know. how many times can Rufus come back and tell him, dudes, you got to make that song, dudes. I know, Rufus. We know we have to write a song so we can bring world peace. Now, yeah, the, click on the comments. On the comments? And that's made... Yes, Kronos Chiron wants the comments read. Okay. Oh, you want the comics read? Uh, uh, comments read. Uh, Nick W says, uh, focus on metal and monumental. Mm hmm March here. I know what Bendis won't be teasing any money out of his wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, March here continues says, if they touch Batman Beyond, I will be completely okay. Uh, Bendis, thank you, Joshua. Uh, they might touch Batman, not where you think. <laughs> not if you eat all the acorns. Two whole comments got read. Them, uh, them, lol. Oh, okay. Uh, Veilness says, I'd watch it over Star Wars if it comes out in December. And actually, I read a lot more than two Kronos Kyra. What are you talking about? Uh, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I watched these movies when I was a kid. This was my generation where Bill and Ted came out of. And they, they were, I don't know. I never got why Bill and Ted was a thing, dude. It's, I mean, go back and watch it now. It does not hold up. It does not hold up at all. They're really bad. Now, there's some little funny bits in it for sure. Uh, especially with the Grim Reaper, I thought there was some funny bits with that, but that movie doesn't hold up at all. So it's like, why are we having a three, third one? I guess just the nostalgia. But did any, but does anyone here actually love Bill and Ted? No. All we are is dust and wind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's yeah. that. Todd, did you want to make any comments <laughs> on the Bill and Ted 3 Christmas release? I thought this actually wasn't going to happen. So did I. I mean, they talked about it, but I didn't think it was really going to happen. Yeah. Did they crowdfund this? Nope. I don't know. They've been <laughs> trying to get this going for quite a while, but I don't know. It it, it will have nostalgia legs, and, and, you know, and in my opinion, they have an opportunity to make an actual good movie. You know, like, yeah. I didn't well, care for the first ones, really. Uh, so make a good, funny movie. Well, that could be an awesome thing, dude. Look Look what they've gone here with just the picture of Keanu Reeves. He's got a, the little mustache going on, right? Now, it's it's this little thing, you know, that you would think that he would have that for, for the character. But it is a mustache. He's representing the older version of himself, right? So is, they're is, not just doing... They came back. Yeah, yeah. They're not just doing Bill and Ted. It, it looks like Bill and Ted... Like, I wouldn't say growing up. No, this, but is, like, this is from the movie, dude. This is a shot from the movie. Am I, am I, am I mistaken? Yeah, we'll you're all, fine. Yeah, yeah. This mind. is from the movie. I'm they trying. went in time I'm and trying. they learned to actually play guitar and they came back and this was, you know, what they looked like. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I see what you're trying to do, but uh, yeah, no. I think, but I think so. I, I think if they, if they keep, if they keep this though, as the, as the old version, that's what I meant. Oh, I see. No, uh, maybe. I mean, I think they have a. I think they have an opportunity to make a good film. I hope. Grown up, see, like Bill and Ted, grown up, but they're not grown up, you know, because they're still they're still going to be the stupid kid like people. But now they have grown up lives. 
right? And you know people like that. I suppose. So I think that could be hilarious. I think uh, that can be hilarious. Well, no, well, you don't. Well, you well, live in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you have responsible Japanese people in a little village. Yes. Yes. We, on the other hand, see people that, that get years under their belt but never grow up. And I, I think if they do that with Bill and Ted, this will be amazing. Yeah, that's like a parrot. That's basically what the third movie is about because they still have to do, they grown up and they haven't grown up and they still have to make that final song. That's that's basically what the movie, no, third movie is about. The, the, the great song that saves the world. That's right. Yeah. Um, I'm sure okay. that will be the whole point of the movie. Uh, Valenit says, I'd watch it over Star Wars if it comes out in December. <laughs> Nick W, is this going to be about tweens like Ghostbusters 3? Dear Hollywood, not everything has to be Stranger Things. Yeah, right? March Hare, I love the Bill and Ted movies. Cool, dude. My wife did, too. A lot of people did. Uh, Lou, uh, the illustrator, is here. He says, uh, God gave rock and roll to you. God gave rock and roll to you. Yeah. Good song. Kiss, baby. Uh, Vailna, the first movie is fun. The second with the Grim Reaper is a bore. Mm, true, but the, when they were playing the board games with Grim, Grim Reaper, it was pretty funny. Uh, Krynos Kyra <laughs> says, Keanu has mo more money than God. Not really. Keanu actually gives a lot of his money away. Uh, March Hare, come on, you had to love when Genghis Khan ravages the sports consort. <laughs> Dude, it has a lot of great funny fun. I'm not saying it's bad. I just didn't I didn't get why it was such a big hit. And if you go back and watch it again, it doesn't hold up. But like I said, my wife loves that movie. She's not even American. Um, <laughs> Lou says, was it Beethoven that was rocking out with the keyboard on Mozart? Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> Willie Reed says, this whole stream has gone to the dudes. Yeah. <laughs> dude, 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 dude. <laughs> now, uh, seeing as it's already been mentioned, Bloodhead. that brings us right into the next article, right? Right. <laughs> this is uh, this is actually an audition. Should I click it? Uh, maybe I should. No, click it. I'm, no, click it. Uh, I'm clicking it. No. It's yeah, 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 yeah. I clicked okay. it. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This Nick here, a, back with another hybrid video, network so I, I exclusive. Be yeah. So recently, we yeah, heard I, about that's Sony why I told planning you not to a new Ghostbusters film. Okay. Well, he is looking at the audition tapes here, though. Oh, come on! Is that what you're going to do to me? Fine, fine. Shall not be yeah. watched. Uh, but uh, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, what the, is happening here is... Oh, oh, oh Danelli, go ahead. Basically, some of the, uh, uh well. Nick had hit it earlier that they're trying to cast younger teenagers, yeah. you know, like teenagers from 13, 14, uh, to be the star of the new Ghostbuster 3. And that, you know, what Sony kind of promised isn't what we're going to be getting. No, it's, so, a kid's oh. kids. it's a kid's movie. Yeah. Absolutely, kid's movie. And that, I don't, that's, that's not what I want. But if it's a good kid's movie, awesome. Open it up no. to a new generation. I have no problem with that. No. No, not a kids movie, a family movie that you can watch with everybody, kind of like the original Ghostbuster, which was kind of horror but funny, and you had comedians. What happened to that sort of thing? You so watched that... a different movie than I did. Really? I watched Peter Venkman coming on to every blonde and brunette that went by. He's electrically zapping some other dude, even when he got the picture right in the psychic test. This was not a family movie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. And, and it goes, the original Ghostbusters, uh, it has several themes is why it works so well. But in the end, mm -hmm. I've always felt the Ghostbusters, the original one, was a love story, really, between, you know, uh, uh, Murray and um, Sigourney Weaver. <clears throat> That's why I saw it. It's basically a love story that had the drapings of other things, you know, men trying to make their own enterprise and ghosts and comedy and all this other stuff. But in the at the core heart of it, it was a love story from my point of view. Right. You watched a different movie than I did as well. Did. Hey, Todd, yeah. what do you think about this movie? Because I'm sure it must be different. Well, wait, what movie? What are you talking Ghostbuster. about? The original. The Ghostbuster movies? Yeah, the original one. Number one. Yeah, no, no, they were good. I mean, we were kids, right? I mean, yeah. we were all kids, weren't we? we so were. this is like again, this is sort of a nostalgia type thing. Mm -hmm. And the characters were kind of cool. And we, we like remember these were one thing after another for them. Of course, we what what did we get first? 
was like 1942. And then, you know, you had Caddyshack and, oh, yeah. oh what was the, what was the army movie? Was Stripes. The army movie? Stripes. 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 Meatball. So this is, I mean, these were like mm -hmm. yeah. big to us, you know, because compared to what was, you know, any, I don't remember much of anything that was coming out other than these type of things, the John Candy movies, the, the uh, Richard Pryor movies, you know, remember Toy and that yeah. kind of stuff. So this is all in that same sphere. Brewster's Millions. Of, this is our childhood. Yeah, Brewster's Millions. Yeah, that's right. He was a baseball player, right? Yeah. And yep. John Candy was a catcher. <laughs> Can you imagine John Candy on the baseball field? No. But they were funny. <laughs> he played it, though. They were well, well he written. They, they were just sort of cheese, you know. You know they, were, they were very surface type funny movies. They weren't. You didn't have to. You just went to be amused. Yeah. You know, by the and, antics, <clears throat> by the. And veiled it is absolutely correct here. For the '80s, that was a family movie. Yes, it was. People have become very soft these days. The the, the world is the, the Western world has become way too soft because the Ghostbusters was absolutely a family movie in the '80s. I'm the key master. Are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? Sex I want to see. Dude. I want to see Rick Moranis come back, <laughs> and I want to see him being an old, an older guy now, wearing the jumpsuit, still trying to be Mister Cool for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> old. I think maybe that would be Riot. Hey guys, I'm Ghostbuster. Yeah, there used to be yeah. four of us, but you know they all retired or died or. And Oh, and, and Egon. I sure hope Egon is able to come back as a ghost, help yeah. them from the other side. Yeah, right. I don't know if they, don't know if then, they get away and, with that, but yeah, that would be cool. Yes, but, and then of course you, you put you put on there, you know, in, in memory of. And, sure. Uh, anyway. You know, I think I think you could get, get a kick out of it. No, he probably would. Yeah, yeah but he's he's not with us he anymore. Tell them, uh, but he can uh, tell them all the cool things from the ghostly perspective of who the villain is from the other side. You know his weaknesses or what he's all about, and yet he's a ghost, so he's Egon the ghost, and they're Ghostbusters, so they'd freak out when they see him. It would be spear riot. It would be, but it, you do realize the PC police would lose their damn minds, dude. Um, and I also uh, know that I'm more creative than anyone in Hollywood. So, uh, well, it, I, I'm pretty much sure we could pick up a, a drunk bum on the street, and that would be the same. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, Thank but you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, but the thing is, uh, with uh, Rick Moranis, I one little mistake I thought they made with the second movie she was pregnant with a uh, had a child from another dude she didn't end up with Vinkman uh, I thought it would have been much funnier if she was pregnant from the key master oh my goodness <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then she, they were basically married out of necessity and you know a oh, little Oscar having Rick Moranis is his oh dad oh yeah, wow that would have been hilarious they were talking about John Wick. I don't know. We weren't. Uh, March Hare says, you're right, Chester. Society's gotten very soft. I love Ghostbusters. What did you do, Ray? <laughs> uh, Nick W. Got says, his cherry pop by ghosts, apparently. I would be on board for Ghostbusters kids being in their 30s, 40s, taking over but uh, uh, over but grandchildren. Um, yeah, uh, all I want is a good movie, you know. Uh, to be honest yeah. with you, if they had shut up, in 2016, about the whole progressive PC thing, but of course we know that Kevin Feig—that's all he does. It's all about because he he can't he doesn't like men. He said this publicly. He 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 can't relate to them, and he want, always pushing the female agenda. But if he had done a funny movie and not yelled and cussed at the at the consuming public, it, it probably would have been nothing, and people just forgot about it. But they couldn't shut up, right? And they screwed it up. Uh, and he's so, still not shutting up. And they still know they're they're coming on hard because how dare you make a new movie? Ours was the beginning, the middle, and the end. Nothing more they did. Well, it is the end because we're back to the original timeline. But we'll yeah, see how it. we'll see how this goes, you know. True. Maybe they can pull up another Stranger Things. Maybe, you know. Well, that's a fair statement that, that was made earlier. They, they they are so, oh, Stranger Things was successful. Yeah, for a season, kind of. But it was a, a Stranger Things. It, 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 it was good because of what was around it to be compared to. 
in comparison, it wasn't it wasn't that good. Season two was pretty bad, actually. So yeah. why are you chasing and and gl- uh, glomming on to you know uh, imperfect things? It's like a it's like a simp. The Hollywood has well, become a simp, and if you don't know what that means, go look it up because you'll find it's quite appropriate. Well, it's kind of like cycle, you know, Hollywood is waiting for the next generation of filmmakers, creative, the creative force um, to hit the scene. And that's kind of where we are. We, we already kind of used up for the lack of better words or phrasing, you know, the greats, you know, Steven Spielberg is not going to wow us anymore because he's already wowed us to the point that we've seen a lot of his work you know, in his generation has already done that. So we're kind of like, okay, what is the next generation who's going to be that big giant force Mm -hmm. to push forward the medium? And that's kind of what... Wow, we finished, finished. We we beat this headless horseman to death. We did. (laughs) Uh, Valenet says the villains of the new Ghostbusters are alternate reality female Ghostbusters who invade. That would be funny and boy the balls it would take to do that but i would have it oh yes uh march here said yes. i was going to see gh 2016 i guess that's ghostbusters 2016 until the crap storm mm-hmm. started then i was out of course it's the same reason i didn't go see black panther yep still haven't finished well, not... season two of stranger things yeah yep well march here you can actually go watch uh black panthers in the theaters for free during black uh monday or the month of Whatever that is. What is After Black the Monday? I never heard of Black Monday. Not, I heard of Black Friday. Not Black, no, not Black Monday or Friday or uh, whatever. Juneteenth? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, what Are we is talking it about Black call... History Month? Yeah, Black History Month. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a suggestion. If you're looking for some good things, you know what? Go on the Netflix and, and if it says British television, you're, you're golden. Uh, no, the- no, no! Oh, come Do on! Do not listen not to Todd. Fallen? He is he is trolling you. Bad Todd. You've bad. Seen- I'm concerned about this. What that Wakanda is considered part of Black History? I don't know, yeah. dude. They said Wakanda <laughs> forever. We got to build our own Wakanda. We got to go back to Africa and make Wakanda, dude. Please, there is no Wakanda. <laughs> please, please do. Please do. And all those normal people who are Americans who just happen to be black no. will stay and keep doing all the jobs they do, like doctor and lawyer and all that kind of useful stuff. And all of you who identify with that because you ain't got no job and you do nothing but cause trouble, go over to Africa and leave us with the actual Americans. How about that? That would be wonderful. You're in Japan. What are you talking about? Hey, man, I'm a patriot. <laughs> oh, I'll give you that. Yeah. All right. Respect. No. The Brits have gone way past getting woke. They are deep, deep in denial woke, dude. <clears throat> it's really yeah. bad what the BBC is putting out. It's really, really bad stuff, dude. I mean, Doctor Who's a lady, and she's not even in the show. Most of the show is about all her lesbian woke people and them trying to prove that history was in, in Britain was full of powerful women and, and, and Caesar was black and Achilles was black and et cetera, et cetera, which is, you know, it kind of kills me because you know what? There actually are black heroes you could tell stories about. Oh, no, we couldn't do that. Assholes. Oh, wow. That is so true. Yeah. Next. We are swearing up a storm today. Aren't we are, yeah. dude. We're on fire. I do <laughs> apologize. No, BBC has definitely become toxic mailman. It's really bad. It disappoints me. Uh, go ahead, Danelli. Absolutely. The Invisible Man finds director set a new course for Universal Monster Legacy. They're not going to do the monster share universe anymore because of what the mummy hmm. with Tom Cruise happened. But I don't think it's the fall of the mummy. I just think it's the fall of poor programming and not having a showrunner kind of like Kevin Feige to kind of say, hey, this is going to be our plan. Instead of stuffing everything in one go, let us build the first one and get in, you know, make a penny dreadful and get characters we yep. care about, yep. which we didn't get in the mummy. Penny dreadful um, was a fine series. Exactly. So if they kind of did it in that vein and then set the monster ablaze, you know, we it would actually work in their benefits. I mean, I remember Monster Squad 
which is kids fighting all these monsters. Uh, remember in the eighties. Um, so, but anyways, so they're going to try a new direction and they're going to see how it goes with the invincible, uh, invisible man. Well, I mean, the problem they had with the mummy and Dracula was mm-hmm. they weren't good movies. That's the only problem. There was no other problem. That's the point. They just weren't That's good. The mm-hmm. Right. I actually liked the twist, which they had the idea for the mummy. I liked that twist. Oh, it's a good idea. It just didn't execute it. It just wasn't a, it didn't have no flow. The pace was horrible. And, you know, the Dracula movie was just not good, guys. I mean, you know, that's the only problem with those movies. They're just not good. So just make a good movie. How about that? I mean, that's that's how you have a successful franchise. They keep wanting to make these franchises. They want to be like Marvel. But the thing is, Marvel took a lot of time and a lot of thinking to construct something, and they took their time. They were patient. And they told one good story after the other. They weren't sitting there constantly filling their movies full of things setting up for the next movie. Uh, They did very little uh, uh, building for the next, just a touch. And they focused on one movie at a time. And that's why they've been successful. And they they can't get beyond this. Everything has to be said. We're going to set up our 20 movies. Make sure you have all these pieces in here and you screw up your movie. It's like, what do you do? You honestly, it does start with just one good story. Right, like the mummy. The mummy just needs one good story, and then and you can build on that. And you, you do need you do need to have a few elements, you know, already put in there, a a a world vision. So you have to have a creator that's behind it, saying this is going to be the world vision, and we're going to make the mummy. Then we can do either a, either a Dracula or an Invisible Man. And the the idea is you don't necessarily need to make a blockbuster. Just make a good movie. Yeah. I don't need Tom Cruise in it either. Don't give me a Tom Cruise or a Denzel Washington. Give me someone who is a good, accomplished actor that is a master of his craft that isn't necessarily already a big superstar. Because whenever I see a superstar like Morgan Freeman and heck, Samuel L. Jackson, they, they're only playing their part. The only reason why Samuel L. Jackson works is because that part was designed for him in the comic book. Everyone else that you see um, was able to actually get into the character and not be just somewhat some big actor coming into this role. So you start with that. And then after that, then you, you, you start layering those things with just good stories. And, and it, it can't be that hard because the good story is already there with the universal monsters. Yeah, you don't have told. to step. <laughs> you don't have to step too far away from the universal monsters. Now you just have better special effects and you've got color. I mean, that just, this this is just should be so so easy. And I think it would be and it would be great to see. And it, the MCU has created the recipe. Just sit back. Cre- and use that recipe book. It's the, pro- no. the problem is yeah. that they don't want to wait for the time to develop it. That's what people don't seem to get, and it's kind of we kind of see it with um, even in the crowdfunding. Everybody jumped in and saw the big giant money that EVS gained without understanding that you know EVS, uh, is John EVS. Malin, yeah, EVS. Um, your boy Zach, they all put in the work beforehand by having a YouTube channel, by building up the community, and then launching it. You know, you know what you yeah. said there. You said build up the community, and what that is—that is, that is the, a, a nice little term for relationship. Yes. When when yeah. we built, when we saw Iron Man, and then we saw Captain America, and then we saw Thor. You're building a relationship with us, and that's what and that's what makes it so good because we get involved in the characters and we have a relationship with them. And they're trying to rush the relationship. And you know what happens when you try to rush a relationship? That's actually called assault. Yeah. <laughs> George. Nobody is wants George has a very good comment. Uh, Chester, Universal did it right. Starting in the 1930s, right up to the 60s, they had the universe created perfectly. Multiple actors intertwined with multiple roles. Look them up. No, dude, I've seen them all, dude. Those are really good movies. That's what that's what DeWolf was saying. You already had the story. 
just modernize it with new actors and stuff. But how much you guys, are, you, who, how much you want to bet here that this Invisible Man is going to be wearing, instead of wearing the wraps, he's got to be wearing some cake paste makeup so that we can see the actor's face. You know oh, I mean? I... yeah, they'll, and, and they'll, you know they'll do it. Well, and these, in, in, in the subtlety behind these, when you remove that mask and there's nothing there, wow, it, it it's creepy. All right, it is, creepy. or it could be, or it could be funny, like um, Chevy Chase in his role as the invincible, uh, invisible man, and they had to put makeup on his face. Play product so he could be seen. Yeah, no, I, I hate it when they do that. That's one of the reasons I have such respect for Carl Urban. Uh, whether you love everything he's done, that dude went into Judge Dredd and didn't show his face once. Not once. Right. And it was awesome. Oh, true. Beautiful movie. If you haven't seen Dredd, go watch that. <clears throat> it's really good. Right. And the thing with the real invisible man is that the invisibil- invisibility potion was driving him crazy. Yeah. A lot of times when you see later incarnations, he's he has his full wits and that's no longer fun. The fact that he was being driven crazy by the serum actually was was the creepy part, you know. And and as far as the article goes, I do hope that they're right here because if they are taking the universal monsters in a different way than the, than the way they already have, then that means something good and maybe we'll find a good invisible man movie and a good start to a universal uh, pictures universe it would be but uh, let me ask another question <clears throat> i'm just showing this uh last article which we don't need to really cover let's just talk about jonathan frank's uh, uh frakes excuse me doing a episode of uh, std um <clears throat> whatever uh but um uh, the thing with the, this is, you know, we're talking about how you do things right and how, how we, we like it. And, of course, everyone agrees. But um, the question is, <clears throat> is another factor involved that maybe we're just not at this current time, the, the, the zeitgeist of the day, and maybe it's just not the right time for monsters? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, no, I think we are. Because yeah. of Netflix series building the serial killer, it was very popular. Mindhunter. No, I get that, but um, when they announced their dark universe and stuff, I was like, uh, "Yeah, that's dumb. Who wants that? Right. No one's asking for that." Is what I was thinking. Yeah, a good movie is a good movie. No, yeah, I remember nobody was asking for a uh, MCU. Oh yes, they either. were. It was deep in their heart. I saw it. Uh huh. <laughs> anyway, guys, I can we, tell there's I can tell the whole yeah. sarcasm laced there in your voice. Okay, thank you. Um, but uh, wait a minute, Are you tell me when you were were a little younger and you saw certain movies like Blade or whatever, like man, wouldn't it be awesome to have the Avengers on screen? You never thought that? Nope, I did, dude. There you go. I did. I, did every, I thought that I did when every I day. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, that when I saw the Captain America movie, that really horrible one. You know why? Because I saw X Men One and it disillusioned me from it. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, but nevertheless, <laughs> that's the animated yeah, show. That was I show. know, but when I saw that, I wanted the movie, oh, and you recognize it right off the bat. Of course, yes. that was a great series, dude. All yeah. right, guys. Yeah. Well, we are past our time, but that's all right. <clears throat> we do try to keep this down to a tight hour if we can. Uh, March Hare says, uh, yeah, I enjoyed the Lee Extraordinary Gentleman. Yeah, that movie gets a lot of flack, but I actually didn't mind it. I thought it was fun. Uh, but anyway, we want to end today by just uh, sitting here and mentioning Inicron, of course. Uh, we want you guys to go over and try it out and uh and uh, check it. It uh, it definitely keeps us informed with all the books that are coming out. And there's some it's more status. things starting to drop. So it's really cool. It's going to start getting busy, Stat- guys. Right. Hit status. Hit status? Oh, sure. Yes. Because that's where you want to go. Okay. It's a funding because it'll pop up. I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we uh, looked at the Samurai Dinosaur. We uh, we were mixed on how we felt about it. Uh, the Good Night, I think, overall, we were like, yeah, that's cool. We had McGee on here. And it yeah. was a nice conversation. Uh, but there are new things to start talking about. We're going to have to get in back in here and start doing that. And, of course, coming up here in February, March, April, into the summer, it's going to get busier and busier, which is really cool. I'm looking forward to it. 
<clears throat> I hope you guys are all uh, looking forward to it as well. Um, but because uh, there's going to be some very interesting projects to back and support. And, you know, we're <clears throat> we, of course, are here to support this indie revival and put our money behind it. I mean, that is what we're doing. Uh, but we also are, are not going to throw money at uh, after bad. We're not going to do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, just keep checking back here and all the other places uh, you can find on the YouTube in, in the community and getting a look at these projects. And if it's something that you feel you can sort, please do. Uh, make an effort to try to keep this ball rolling and, and keep uh, the Indie Revival a revival. Um, you know, uh, and just, uh, you know, this is a really good place here, IndieCron, to come check that out and keep, uh, keep abreast of the situation. So, anyway. Yep. That is that, guys, and uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, I'm going to let uh, Denali here uh, tell us all about the things coming up and what we're doing as usual, and um, jump over here, so uh, go ahead, Denali, tell them about what's going all right. on. All right, so we were going to do a Bunny Vision movie night this mm -hmm. Saturday, but unfortunately, Chester has some family things he has to do, so we're going to postpone that movie that we were going to watch that Saturday to um, two weeks from now, because um, that would be the 16th yeah. because <clears throat> next Saturday uh, will be fan speak because that's the one Saturday that we have to do because Chester's obligation. So you get the common theme here, this Chester's fault, It is, my uh, yeah. <clears throat> but um, the 16 will be a good way because we'll be actually watching John Wick. One. John Wick. So come and join us on the 16th of February for John Wick. Um, we'll have fan speak regular on this Friday. Watch our boy Booster Goal um, as he uh, act like the clown he is with the Pro Edition uh, this Wednesday. And then join us on the fan edition of Drawn and Quarter this Thursday. And then tomorrow, I guess Chester and the guys will be playing board games. Yes, we are going to be playing board games. <clears throat> I'm uh, still making a decision which one we're going to play, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be good for a live stream. So definitely come check that out. That tabletop simulator is really cool. And keep in mind, guys, uh, you over here in the chat, if you want to be involved, it's you can be. That's the good thing about the tabletop simulator. Just go on Steam, buy it. It's like 20 bucks, And you can join us. You don't have to have... I mean, the, most of the games are all free anyway. But the few ones that cost money, only one person needs to have it for everyone to play it. And um, you can actually be in the chat and, and join us on there. Or you could even say, hey, I want to be involved. And come over here and sit on the panel with us. You can do that too. Uh, but uh, definitely we've got to try that out again. Last time we did it, it was really successful. People... I got a lot of comments. People loved that. They had fun with that. And because, you know, it's... Uh, we're going to play games that are, you know, a debacle. <laughs> and therefore, it's funny, right? So, Right. And Booster can't say what word? Uh, bo <laughs> uh, huh? <laughs> we, we... The risk. <laughs> the risk. Right. Anyways, uh, as always, thank you for joining us on the stream. We hope to see you tomorrow. We're going to ignore Todd right now. Because he doesn't matter. We have go ahead. It's okay. He, go, he go has ahead, a deck ahead. head after that, after all. So. Go ahead. Go where's, ahead. Talk. Where's, uh, uh, there's a show coming on Thursday. And whose channel is it on? It's going to be on your show, dude. Oh, yeah. Your channel. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be <laughs> on. Fan Edition Drone Accord this week <clears throat> is going to be on Todd Maroney's channel, uh, Ignition, I believe. Uh, why don't you give a shout out for that, real quick? Uh, I know uh, Willie's already thrown it up in the uh, chat, the link, but go ahead, Todd. Thanks, Willie. Uh, it's Ignition Get Tuned In. Um, it's the lowest rated channel on, on YouTube, but, you know, <laughs> we're going to change it. <laughs> we are. We are. Yeah. Uh, but of course, it's going to be fun as usual. All right. Absolutely. But as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. Namaste. Later, Did guys. Avengers!